Ready to go? Excellent. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just before we get started, uh, I was told to remind you, we, uh, this session is scheduled for 40 minutes. We're going to talk for maybe 25, 30 minutes, and then we'll open up for questions. So when you, if you're interested in asking a question, please try to come to the microphone. There are two microphones over there, because this is being recorded. <clears throat> So it's good for people to hear the question before they hear the answer. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. Uh, so I am Ali Kafel. I'm from Red Hat, and I'm here with my colleague, DP, from Juniper Networks. I'll just maybe just introduce myself quickly and have DP do the same. So I, I, I'm, I've been with Red Hat for about a year, and I'm focused in the networking group for Red Hat. Um, I've been in uh, technical marketing and business development. And uh, I work very closely with my colleagues from Juniper. So, DP, maybe you can make a Sure, thanks, Ali. Yeah? Um, I'm DP Aydevra. I'm a director in, Contra uh, in uh, Juniper Product Management, uh, focused on uh, Contrail uh, networking and Contrail related uh, product portfolio. Excellent. So, the agenda today, as you can see, is uh, we'll go very quickly through. I, I suspect a lot of people here know Red Hat and Juniper, but just in the context of this presentation, we'll just give you a quick overview. Then, we're going to talk about the differences uh, between NFV and SDN, at least from our perspective. Um, then, we'll, we'll go into some of the uh, you know, challenges uh, in. You know, obviously, I assume since we're all at the OpenStack Summit, people know OpenStack very well, and Neutron within OpenStack uh, works really well in many, uh, in many uh, networks, but there are some networks where it needs to be augmented, so we'll talk about you know, some of the limitations in standard Neutron, and then how you augment Neutron with an SDN you know, controller uh, like you know, Juniper Contrail to turn on advanced services. And then we'll go into... A use case, we have actually a tier one telco. When we did this presentation, we, uh, we hadn't gotten the okay to, uh, to use the name, but this telco is actually orange in, uh, in France. So we'll talk about some of the lessons we learned. That was a solution we did jointly, uh, Juniper and Red Hat. So that's the agenda. So just very quickly, uh, Red Hat, I think uh, most people here probably know who Red Hat is. Uh, what, what you may not know is that um, uh, we are uh, very uh, engaged in the telco space and the networking space. Um, we actually have uh, essentially all of the uh, SMP 500 telcos use Red Hat uh, banks and so on. And um, we are, as, as most people know, we're a software infrastructure company and we're the leading contributor across all of the key open source community projects, obviously Linux, KVM but also OpenStack and OPNV. Uh, OPNV, as uh, some of you may know, it's sort of the reference architecture uh, for building a, a telco-grade uh, NFV platform. Uh, so that's sort of a quick overview of Red Hat. I'll have my colleague talk about Juniper. So yeah, to give a brief overview of Juniper, uh, how many of you are not familiar with who Juniper is or what Juniper does? Um, okay, that's pretty good. So I can skip through the slide very fast then. Um, so some of the key things we want to point out is Juniper uh, is a, uh, known for its innovation. And one of the key things we did is about uh, four years back, we acquired this company called Contrail. And uh, Contrail is the startup that came into Juniper, and Juniper has helped open Contrail, which is the product from Contrail, um, flourish and be successful in both telcos, enterprises, and cloud services, right? And a couple of key things I want to highlight is um, we are known for our telco presence, but what, is in, what uh, you may find interesting to see here is like we are in the top 10 social media uh, properties, four of the top five largest search engine uh, uh, companies uh, without naming them explicitly, right? And we are in like um, almost all the financial services, major um, financial services companies, as well as uh, exchanges. So the gist is basically Juniper has been pretty successful in terms of both telco as a segment, enterprises, um, SaaS, cloud service providers, as well as, um, um, uh, as, well as financial services. OK. Click the right. Yeah. All right. So uh, just how many of you here have heard uh, of Open Contrail or 
Okay, that's pretty good. So just to kind of give you a brief overview of what Open Contrail is, right? Open Contrail is an, um, is an open source um, uh, based cloud networking initiative, right? And um, we use Apache V2 license, so uh, that's a standard today. Um, and one of the key highlights of Open Contrail is that it's completely based on, um, uh, it's a standards-based implementation. So we use BGP, um, and then we use XMPP, and everything, our entire implementation is standards-based. And what that gives uh, our um, users or our customers is basically um, a no a need for a vendor lock-in, right? I mean, being open source doesn't necessarily mean that um, uh, you know, you're out of the vendor lock-in mode. But in our case, it's a completely standards-based solution uh, and leveraging a lot of uh, the protocols that exist today, right, and their extensions. So that kind of gives you the interoperability and multi-vendor kind of scenarios that we can support with Open Contrail. Yeah? Um, we are not limited to, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, virtual machine, you know, providing connectivity for VMs, uh, be it OpenStack environment or vCenter. We are also extending the same capabilities to the container world. We have Kubernetes-based integration, Mesos, uh, OpenShift, and so on. And we recently, just yesterday, we published a blog on our upcoming release and what capabilities it um, provides. So I um, encourage you to go to OpenContrail and to Juniper.net to read the latest on that. Um, one of the key things about Open Contrail is it was developed as a cloud native networking solution. What that means is a lot of emphasis on API. Everything needs to be API driven, and that's kind of the philosophy we have today. And um, we can easily integrate northbound with any orchestration system, like I said, be it OpenStack, uh, be it Kubernetes, be it vCenter, or any of them, right? And one of the key advantages we have, something that we um, develop the product into something that helped us mature as a product uh, or as a solution through our deployments is basically um, uh, we are known for our scalability. We are known for our high performance. And we make your, um, in the telco environments, we make your um, uh, network connectivity and networking services carrier grade, right? So those are some of the key highlights of what Open Contrail does. Probably should pick up the speed a little bit. Where sure. <laughs> Um, so uh, I think everybody uh, that knows Red Hat knows that uh, this upstream first from communities to the enterprise is a big philosophy and the mantra of Red Hat. So uh, you know there are over a million open source projects out there. Red Hat is involved in about 1,500 different projects. And from those projects, these are just some of the projects that we're involved in. From those projects is where we actually create products. So 100% of our products are actually open source based on you know, community project that most of them we're, we're involved with and make a lot of contribution to. And we actually pull different you know, uh, open source projects to create products, and the products are what we support. And uh, one of the nice things about uh, uh, open, uh, but Juniper Contrail is that they follow the same philosophy with the uh, Open Contrail uh, concept, and that's one of the things I really like. Uh, you know, in addition to the different uh, additional uh, unique features that DP mentioned briefly, and he's going to talk more about. So let's get started here. So NFV versus SDN. Before we talk about NFV versus SDN, I just want to put it in the context of this digital economy that we're all talking about, you know, digital transfer, transformation. You know, how does NFV and SDN fit into this digital economy? I think we all know today that one of the biggest challenges that the telcos and the enterprises have is this data and digital disruption that's causing hyper growth of traffic. So the telcos, for example, are experiencing a huge amount of traffic growth, flat revenue, which means that their budget is flat. But in order to really keep up with that growth in revenue, they have to find different ways of really supporting that huge bandwidth. Just to give you some perspective, it's one thing to say you know, there's hyper growth in data traffic. But just to put it in context, one of the telcos that has done a very good job in sharing a lot of information is AT&T. You know, AT&T talks about from 2007 to 2015, they had 150,000% growth in traffic in their network. That's just unbelievable, right? 60% of their traffic is video, right? 
And um, when you look at that traffic, they say every day they have 114 petabyte of data traffic that goes through their network. 114 petabyte may not sound like something impressive, but when you think of it in terms of it's 130 million hours of video traffic in one day. That's just unbelievable. And uh, video is 60% of their traffic. And just to give you context, you know, the average video, one minute of video is about four megabit, m megabyte of, of, of traffic. You know, when they talk about virtual, when we talk about virtual reality, you're talking one minute of virtual reality could be over 100 million you know, megabyte of data. So it just shows you the, the growth of traffic that is going through the network right now and what's coming. So therefore, we need to really build networks differently. The other big challenge is this global competition that's coming from the new players. You know, I have over there the fangs and the bats. How many people have heard that, those terms, fangs and bats? Anybody in the room? So fang is really a Wall Street term for Facebook. Amazon, Netflix, and Google. It's a term that really describes this hyper-growth companies, like those companies. And then BAT is really Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. So it's the Chinese equivalent of you know, the fangs in the US. And what these companies are doing, as we all know, we all experience them every day, is just the growth that they're going through the network. And what this means is there's a new reality. The new reality is that in order to really address digital transformation, we have to turn to cloud and software define everything. And, uh, and that's really what we're talking about here. So when we talk about digital transformation, as techies, we tend to talk a lot about technology. Technology is a big part. In this session, we're talking about cloud and NFV. But there's also lots of other technology that's really driving the trends in the industry. As we, all, as we all know, and many of us talk about this every day. But the other thing that's interesting is really the people and the processes. If you just adopt technology to really embrace digital transformation, and you don't have the processes in place, what we call embrace the open source culture. And open source is more than just about product, even though we tend to talk a lot about product. It's having an organization that thinks the way the open source community thinks and behaves the way the open source community behaves. Um, that's really essential. And then obviously having the leadership that supports that. And if you do all those things right, you really achieve three key drivers. And the, the most important of all is speed, to innovate faster. And the second one is really efficiency, improved efficiency, which we tend to talk a lot about, right? Because, because when you have this big growth, in traffic, you want to have a network that can really support that. And then finally, it's about simplicity. If you do those things right, then you have the results. So when you put it in that context of NFV and SDN, and you know, it's the same thing. It's about, it's about speed, you know, faster, deploying services faster. And just to give you an example, this is a, a well-documented case. Amazon has talked about, on an average, you know, every 11 seconds. You know, they, they uh, deploy an average of, of 10,000 to 30,000 servers at a time using CDCI, which people in this room know very well. But if you look at the traditional telco and enterprise, that's six to seven months. That's huge. You know, if you look at uh, operations, Amazon has one person for 15,000 servers. Traditional uh, corporation has... Um, you know, less than one person supports less than 100 servers, right? And then the complexity is another one. You know, Amazon has, oh, sorry, Google has about 10 configs. A typical telco has over 1,000. So it's, it's a lot more complex. So really, it goes back to what I was saying before. It's not just the technology. It's also the processes and the people. So this comes back to, well, how is NFV going to help us achieve that? So NFV, as many people in this room may know, it's really a concept of virtualizing multi-vendor purpose-built hardware into software uh, network functions, virtualized network functions on commodity hardware with fast elasticity, scalability, 
and dynamic resource allocation, which is really cloud computing. It doesn't really talk a whole lot about the, the bottom layers, which is really the SDN part, although they're very complementary. SDN, on the other hand, as many people know, it is about really separating or centralizing the control on you know, commodity-based hardware and making it easily programmable and automated. So it's really layer one, two, three. So SDN helps NFV, but does not really, um, it's not really required, although it does help NFV significantly. So they tend to complement each other. So the use case here. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of things, just to lighten up the atmosphere. When, when uh, Ali mentioned about fangs and bats, how many of you thought of Dracula? <laughs> None? Okay, see, that's good. So if telcos are facing threat from fangs and bats, we'll help make uh, the telcos the Dracula. Anyway, <laughs> on a more serious note, um, from a Contrail perspective, right? Um, so Ali mentioned about um, AT&T as well, and Contrail is being used in uh, AT&T deployments. Um, one of the key things about Contrail is um, we are not just limited to, let's say, the data center, but we apply we are, uh, Contrail as an SDN solution is applicable in the telco pops as well. And that's where we'll see a lot of NFE use cases coming through, right? Now, the way Contrail as an SDN is architected, um, we uh, tend to be very um, infrastructure agnostic. What that means is whether you have, like we'll see in today's use case, um, which is the pointer? The light? To do a light? Yeah. yeah okay, sorry. Yeah. Did you lock it? So in uh, today's use case, we'll talk about uh, branch offices, right? So whether your uh, compute environment is in branch office, whether it's a data center, telco pop, or be it public cloud, uh, composed of different virtualization technologies or bare metal, et cetera, the objective is um, to provide connectivity, right? That's not the only objective. Right? Contrail as an SDN solution definitely provides connectivity in this diverse environment. We also believe in being able to provide you with a multi-tenanted, secure um, environment. And so security and policy is a very important uh, part of uh, what Contrail tries to address. And lastly, uh, with a diverse environment, you can't have like five different panes of glasses to monitor or to manage or to you know uh, kind of um, derive information out of one for every uh, type of you know your cloud environment. So the idea is to bring this all together as a single manageability platform, where you can um, you know monitor, you can look at your analytics, and um, uh, at the same time integrate seamlessly with the orchestration systems, right? When we look at the use cases, I mean, um, uh, today Open Contrail is deployed in a lot of in a variety of use cases, which cover. Um, I know at the keynotes we've said private clouds are a kind of a taboo word, but you can call it whatever you want. But it's about connectivity in a legacy um, um, with VMware interconnect, or be it VMs and containers. Actually, Contrail now has the capability of, you know, being able to provide connectivity in nested environments where you're running containerized clusters on top of OpenStack, for example. You can use a single Contrail control plane to be able to provide connectivity. If you look at public clouds like SaaS providers, like um, Workday, et cetera, um, Contrail provides a multi-tenanted environment where you can enforce enough security and policy so that your multiple tenants that are using your SaaS services um, are completely compartmentalized. And in the case of telco cloud, um, we, have, we are deployed in almost every tier one uh, telco. Uh, primarily for NFE use cases, leveraging a lot of our rich service chaining capabilities. Um, and we are also addressing IoT and you know, use cases like connected cars and so on. And obviously today we'll talk a little bit about our SD-WAN uh, deployment with uh, Orange. Okay. okay. So what we've talked about so far is really how NFE and SDN fits in the whole need for digital transformation essentially speed, efficiency, and, um, and um, uh, speed, efficiency, and simplicity. Those are really the key, key points, uh, the th key theme of NFV and SDN. So now let's talk about in OpenStack, you know, what, what Neutron does and how Neutron can be augmented. I think we all know that uh, Neutron is the networking piece of uh, OpenStack, and it does 
uh, a fairly good job for most networks. It has an open vSwitch in it, has uh, layer two connectivity, the whole IP address management. It has uh, routing functions through the service plugin concept of layer three routing, load balancing, VPN, and firewall. And, uh, and it does a fairly good job, but when you put it in a uh, very large uh, telco network, there are some limitations that need to be augmented. Uh, for example, um, it may, for, for most telcos that need service chaining, the ability to interconnect different services together, uh, that's lacking. Uh, dynamic uh, routing is, is lacking. The, the chaining physical and virtual network functions. Uh, distributed uh, source network address translation. Um, it, it does support uh, source uh, network address translation, but it's not distributed. It does it in a centralized manner, which really creates you know, some of the um, you know, additional noise, which adds into performance uh, challenges. Uh, it doesn't have, you know, real-time and historic analytics. And when, when, when you uh, look at uh, most networks, the scalability, performance, and availability requirements, you know, Neutron needs to be augmented. And for, for many networks, it's good enough. It does a great job. But for certain networks, uh, very large uh, telco networks, uh, it, it needs help. And that's really where, you know, SDN comes in. Uh, with that, I'm going to have DP talk about how uh, Neutron is augmented with SDN. Sure. Thanks, Ali. So um, this is a typical um, Etsy Mano architecture, if you're familiar with, uh, uh, with the framework. Um, the place where Juniper Contrail, I mean, is working closely with, um, with Red Hat is basically uh, providing the SDN uh, element, uh, which spans across basically the Vim or the virtual network component uh, in this NFV stack solution. Right, so uh, that's basically one of our main focus. And in the containers environment, we are integrated with OpenShift as well, wherein we bring in a lot of uh, the scalability, high availability, and performance aspects into a containerized environment. I mean, if you look at Kubernetes, and um, uh, Kubernetes is still evolving. Uh, it's not mature enough, but using Contrail in a Kubernetes environment, you can still leverage all the mature capabilities that are expected out of any um, uh, well-deployed networking solution. So how do we augment uh, Neutron, right? Um, the first thing is about scale. So like uh, Ali was mentioning, AT&T um, AT statistics about, you know, um, I think um, 140 petabytes and so on. And um, uh, we have proven that we can actually be deployed in a scaled environment. So be it your SaaS cloud, be it telcos, whatever be the use case, scalability is something that's um, a bread and butter to contrail. How do we do that? We use like protocols like BGP, which is actually running the internet, right? So we use all the right um, standards, and we have architected it in a, very, in a way that you know, we are easily scalable. Secondly, performance. Um, uh, in comparison to OVS, I mean, um, definitely VDouter, uh, which is the forwarding element of uh, the Contrail solution, um, uh, is a high-performance solution. And we can run VDouter in DPDK mode, or you can actually run VDouter on a NIC, uh, and that's called a smart NIC or smart I.O. kind of uh, solution. Um, there, was a lot, there was a press release around it in Mobile World Congress as well. So when it comes to performance, um, um, does definitely significantly better than um, OVS. At the same time, there are a lot of different performance characteristics. Um, uh, uh, based on your requirements, you can either go with VRouter DPDK or you can go with um, SmartNIC-based deployments as well. But VRouter, uh, by default, runs in kernel mode. So um, you know, leverages the fact that it's part of the kernel to um, reduce any inefficiencies. When it comes to high availability, um, Contrail as a solution is designed um, uh, for high availability. Control plane, we have three controllers in a cluster, a highly available cluster. And, um, um, and we also do, in terms of when, you, when it comes to lifecycle management of Contrail, um, you know, we can do in-service upgrades. We can do um, a lot of different ways of upgrading uh, without any disruption to your service, uh, depending on you know, what you're comfortable with. Lastly, this is something that's very unique, or uh, this is where a lot of um, 
This is one of the key reasons why um, we have found success with across the board is our networking features, right? I mean, at, at a high level, our objective is to provide secure multi-tenancy, right? But um, when it comes to feature set, it goes beyond that. Like service chaining, it's not just basic service insertion and service chaining. It's about doing end-to-end -end mo um, health monitoring of your service chains, uh, being able to provide load balancing across service chains and um, so on. Um, we support all services like LBAS and firewall as a service and so on. And uh, we, when it comes to an overlay-based um, SDN solution, what customers typically look for is, okay, how do I relate what is happening in the overlay with my underlay fabric? So Contrail comes with an analytics solution where we provide you this whole uh, visible, uh, uh, in a visual way, an ability to relate what's, how a particular flow is traversing in your underlay, though our SDN is an overlay-based solution. So pretty good underlay visibility and so on. And by partnering with AppForm, I mean, we acquired AppFormX into Juniper, and the um, whole uh, correlation of underlay overlay visibility monitoring is only getting more and more feature rich. Okay. So from a Contrail perspective, we tend to um, talk about the capabilities in these 10 uh, buckets. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go into each of these buckets, but you can definitely go to opencontrail.org and take a look at the capabilities in each of these uh, kind of feature areas, right? Um, <clears throat> a couple of key things I would like to uh, point out is um, I'm going to start backwards. When it comes to API services, like I said, we have a REST-based API not bound. Um, we also have plugin-based integration with OpenStack CNI-based integration, Kubernetes environments, and so on. Um, and all that leverages the API services we provide. High availability upgrades, I've already talked about um, uh, how we support high availability and kind of um, upgrades through ISSU. Um, service chaining is one of the key things that telcos look for. And as you can see, we can, uh, you, we can support physical network functions, virtual network functions, uh, do health check, and be able to um, do service chaining based on policies. Okay? We should pick up the speed. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Juniper and Red Hat have jointly uh, for, you know, deployed in a lot of different environments. One of the key reasons being um, Red Hat is the leader for open source and um, it has been one of the top contributors to OpenStack as well. And from an SDN perspective, um, Juniper's uh, or Open Contrail has been rated as the number one commercially deployed SD, uh, commercial SDN solution in OpenStack environments. And this is the latest uh, survey for this particular OpenStack summit, uh, for the OpenStack Summit Boston. But this is not the first time. We have been doing this over four years now. So it's not to brag about it, but to talk about how uh, users also rate as well and how we are learning a lot from our users' scenarios and incorporating um, or, or how their requirements are driving our roadmap. Okay. So uh, we, wanted, we called it Tier 1 Telco case study because we wanted to check with Orange if we can use their name. But uh, it's a public um, information. You can look up Orange and... Um, Red Hat and Contrail, and you'll find enough information on this. Um, one of the key things we did in this telco um, case study is basically um, Orange wanted to um, see, the, Ali mentioned about flat revenues for telcos, and uh, while the traffic growth is uh, exponential, one of the key things we want to enable as their partners is to help them find new revenue streams, right, so that their revenue doesn't stay flat. So one of the key things Orange wanted to do was be able to provide um, um, connectivity to enterprises, right, as a network as a service, right, at a much lower cost, but more importantly, be able to enable um, features and so on in a very agile manner, right? So the idea was to reduce time uh, to add new services, right, to, by moving to virtualized infrastructure on top of their existing networks, and uh, to give enterprise customers uh, the speed, simplicity, and agility that they look for. Yeah, so this network as a service solution is primarily about you know reducing truck rolls, delivering it quickly, um, getting rid of static provisioning and hardware, being able to orchestrate these services, going from a complex kind of uh, infrastructure to very simple and easy to manage uh, infrastructure. Right? These were kind of the asks that um, um, they had, and they were looking for a solution that uh, would get them there. So the solution that we ultimately came up with is basically this, where there's a customer portal where if I am, let's say, an enterprise and I want to um, 
um, start getting, let's say, some kind of a VPN service. I get on the customer portal. I define what exactly I want, what kind of services I want. I want firewall, et cetera, other capabilities. And using an orchestrator, um, we are able to, so first step is where, you know, um, Orange will ship a box to um, uh, the enterprise branch, but then you plug it in and it'll come up autom automatically. Um, it'll, um, um, you know, it'll be provisioned with the, the orchestrator will provision uh, the branch device uh, for services, et cetera, based on what you have ordered. And at the same time, to deliver on those services, they use, um, you know, the SDN controller, which is open contrail, to be able to service chain. Now, OpenStack, Red Hat's OpenStack and um, Juniper contrail is deployed in the telco pop environment where the service chaining um, is being done. And um, um, the VNFs that are being deployed by Orange are basically, there's a VNF manager to be able to do lifecycle management of the VNFs and so on. But at the end of the day, when you look at this whole picture, what we need to remember is uh, the service that we are enabling is from a branch device, be able to service chain through these uh, virtual network functions which exist in the telco world, telco cloud, and um, send it out on the internet. So this is like uh, the basic representation of the use case that they were driving it. DP, I wonder if we should go to lessons learned because we're running out of time. Sure. And then we can... Okay, we can skip the timeline and just go yeah. to... Whoops. Yeah, lessons this, learned. Yeah. So um, one of the key things, um, there are multiple components in an NFE um, architecture, and when you want to deploy a service like VCP or SD-WAN, there are a lot of different components. And it's more about an ecosystem-based solution. So what is important is... Um, you know, um, having open source, right, uh, automatically drives, you know, standards-based implementations and interworking across multiple vendors. Um, standard Neutron OBS is very functional, but in telco environments, to be able to support a lot more branch endpoints and so on, a lot more enterprise customers, you need something that can scale well, and there you need uh, some kind of augmentation using commercial SDN solutions like Contrail. Um, and like Ali mentioned earlier, when it comes to um, it's not all about the technology and uh, the components. It's about the people and the organization and the process. That's also critical. Um, and um, lastly, uh, when it comes to telcos, um, uh, typically I think uh, the, the, the planning to deployment cycle is a little long and complex, but uh, with a virtualized environment uh, and a fully virtualized solution, um, you can actually reduce this time to, uh, um, from planning to deployment um, pretty significantly. Right. Ali, you want to add anything? Yeah, no, I was going to say, and really, this, this goes back to what I said in the beginning. It's not, technology is critical, very important, but, you know, the, the processes and the people in place are really critical, and this is, you know, really talking about the processes. Uh, so I think with that, you know, we're, we're done. We'll open up for questions. I think we have about seven minutes or so for questions. Again, as a reminder, if anybody has any question, please come to the mic uh, and ask your question, and we'll try to answer your question. Any questions? First of all, thank you for, for the talk. Uh, scalability is certainly a good thing, but could you share us some numbers, please? Say, can I stretch open control across a thousand of hypervisors or tens of thousands? How many virtual machines can I have uh, Sure. So I can't talk specifics of this particular use case, but from control, open control capability, um, um, we uh, at Juniper, we have actually uh, qualified um, more than, uh, let's say, 2,000 uh, uh, compute environment. Yeah? So I'm talking about the compute nodes, not the VMs, right? So you can have multiple VMs on each compute node. So um, pretty scalable. We have done more than, um, we can, I can share probably some of the scalability numbers in person as well, but we are talking about thousands of nodes when it comes to, comes to control scalability. The other thing to remember is you can have multiple clusters, right? And through control, be able to federate across the clusters as well, and BGP gives you that capability. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Either we did such a great job explaining everything, or people are just tired, they've had a long day. <laughs> if you have any question, please go to the mic and ask, or you can just call it out and I'll repeat it. 
So for any specifics or any more uh, you know, in-depth information you would want, you can come to either Red Hat booth or Juniper booth. We are in the marketplace and we have a lot more teammates out there who can actually dwell deeper into um, you know, how exactly did we do end-to-end -end monitoring for service chaining or uh, the nature of our integration with Red Hat OpenStack and joint deployment using OSP Director and so on. Yeah, okay. and, and I was going to say, uh, really, the relationship between Red Hat and Juniper has is, is been very positive. I think that's one of the key ingredients in any relationship, and obviously with the customer as well. Um, you know, we try to, uh, you know, define a lot of processes without being too overly process heavy, uh, so that all these projects are managed properly, and that's very critical. And we talked about the cross training in the last slide and the project management. Uh, those are also critical points. Um, so, and we'll be here for a few few more minutes if. Uh, People don't want to ask questions publicly and have any questions, either come talk to us or come to our boots, as DP said. Thank you. Thank you.